God, praise God. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. To God be the glory. He is such a good and faithful God. And I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, uh, a program, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry. Uh, we thank God for bringing us together. Last week, we started a topic called Mara. And uh, Mara, we, we define uh, as something bitter. So we are going to finish it off today. But before we go into the uh, lesson, let us pray. You know that by now, right? Father, we thank you. We praise you because you're good and your mercy endures forevermore. Oh, Lord, you are so faithful to us. Thank you, oh, Lord, for all your goodness. And, Lord, even as we have come before you to learn, Father, we ask that you trouble every heart that is, that is still in a false way without your knowledge, that you will use your word to steer them up in the name of Jesus. And you will cause us to run after you, to seek after you, so we may find the life and the abundant life which you have promised those who follow you. In Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go into the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 15. I will start reading from verse 25 and I will stop at 26. Exodus 15, 25 to 26. So he cried out to the Lord. This is talking about Moses. And the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he, that is God, made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which are brought on the Egyptians. For I, that is God, am the Lord who heals you. And that's where we have the name of God called Jehovah Rapha, you see. Um, now, last week we started by saying that Mara is anything that is sudden, that is sad, that is bitter, painful, and unwanted in people's life. And using the discourse of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, from the area of marriage, and talking about eunuchs, we find three principles or three causes through which afflictions can come into people's lives. And um, uh, we, by the help of the Holy Spirit, the, the case of eunuchs uh, was really perfect for this um, lesson because the book of Isaiah, uh, I believe uh, Isaiah 56, uh, talks about a eunuch being a dry tree. So it's not a good thing to be a eunuch, uh, you know, I guess at the time. So Jesus talked about three ways that people can become eunuchs. And so we talked about it last week. Uh, it can happen naturally. That is, people can be born with it or into it. Uh, it can happen externally from external uh, sources that uh, because of the actions of another person, uh, somebody might receive affliction. And then we also talk about uh, personal infliction when through wrong choices, we bring unwanted situations on ourselves. And I believe we talked about the remedies. So uh, finally, last week, we talked about God's way or system of resolving a problem that when God allows a problem to come into a 
in, to the life of his child uh, is, is, is not going to uh, solve the problem right off the bat. No, he is looking at changing the person from the inside first, then he changes the situation at hand. So today we are going to talk about how Mara, the water itself, how it was turned around. What turned the Mara situation around? I've been discussed the changing the person last week. So let's go. The first thing that led to how Mara, as in the situation, the predicament, the bitter water itself was changed was Moses cried. The crying talked about here is not shedding of tears to express sorrow. No. It's a prayer, watch this, out of agony or out of helplessness. You see, Moses had a problem that he had no way of solving. But he was smart enough to remember that he had the God who just divided the Red Sea. So he reached out to God. God has already reached out to us. So don't say, well, God has not reached out to me. Uh-uh. He has already reached out to us by sending his only begotten son, Jesus. And Jesus came and parted the Red Sea that will have blocked us out of heaven. Are you seeing these parallels? Now, it's our turn to reach out to him if we really want to be helped, you see. Um, I spoke to a lady a little over a month ago, and she, she's going through some rough, rough time. And she claimed to be a Christian, and I said, have you talked to God about all these things you are telling me? Because that's, that's the starting point. You know what? I don't like to trouble God. And I think I have a little bit of pride. I said, oh, you don't have to tell me. I can see that you have that problem of pride. Because if a human being is saying, I don't want to trouble God, and you call yourself a child of God, and you are saying, well, I will just go through what I'm going through until it's resolved. Listen up. We are talking God, okay? So your problem can be too big or too small for a God, if indeed is your God. So the honors is on you. He already reached out to you through Jesus. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you. This is God speaking now. I'm promising. And we tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. You see, Jesus, I tell people, Jesus never said anywhere in the Bible, if you pray to God and God doesn't answer your prayer. No, Jesus never said that. So if you are, looking at your Mara situation today, and you are saying, okay, I get it from last lesson. God is trying to fix something in me. So how do we fix what is on the ground? You can't. Only God can. So reach out to God. To reach out to God is to reach out for help. You really need help? It doesn't matter what you are going through. Do you really need help? Like, I need it. And reach out to God. Okay? His name is Jesus. Amen. Now, what happened after Moses cried to God? God showed Moses a tree. You see, the tree has been there all along. But somehow, watch this. Moses did not see or he saw the tree, but didn't know what it was used for. Do you know that happens to us too? I don't know about you, but I can tell of so many trees that I saw 
and I didn't know what in the world I could use those trees for. And I'm talking in figurative sense now. I'm not talking literal trees, okay? There are so many things. However, God pointed out the specific tree that Moses needed at the time. Do you have more than one brother asking for your hand in marriage? Those are trees. You need Jesus to show you your husband, lest you marry the wrong one. Okay? Do you have three job offers? Don't go for the one with the highest salary. That may be the bait of the devil. Put it before God. Those are trees. Let God show you the very specific tree that he wants for you. Okay? God has equally equipped our environment with whatever we are going to use. Are you listening? To do the job he has given us to do. The challenge we have is, listen, recognizing or identifying our needed miracle tree. Underscore that. Miracle tree for the situation at hand, the matter you are faced with. We need to be still, folks. I know we live in a microwave world. Everything has to be on the go, immediate, instantaneous. But if you want to walk with the God of Israel, come on now. You need to learn to slow down. Sometimes you have to come to a, a total stop. And just be still. We need to be still for divine directions. And stop jumping around trying to fix things our way. Hey, listen, I used to be the queen of fixing it. Okay? But it, it drags your journey like crazy. And you don't want to go that route. If we want Amara, listen to this, resolved on time. You want your problem resolved on time? Learn to wait upon God. Don't move when he has not said anything. Wait when he's not speaking. Wait. If we follow the Lord's directive, we will see the invisible. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah Chapter 42, verse 16a. I, this is God speaking, not me. I will lead the blind by a way they do not know. In paths they do not know, I will guide them. You see, that's a promise. You can take that anytime. Pick your Bible and say, Father, you have promised in Isaiah 42, 16, that you will lead the blind. I don't know which one to choose here. I don't know what to do in this situation. It's your promise. Lord, fulfill your promise. Show me the way. And he will, but in his own time and in his own, on his own term. So you need to remember that. In his own time, on his own term, he will show you the way. You say, but I, I, God has not been listening to me. Do you think he will do that really? Listen, when God has promised, when he says, I will, listen, <laughs> he has more to lose than you because his honor is everything that he is. And he will never lie. He's a holy God. So when he says, I will, you better take it to the bank. That's his honor on the line. So you can be sure when God says, I will do something, take it back to him in prayer and say, God, you promised me. Now show me I'm blind concerning the situation on the ground. I don't know what to do. Show me the tree that you have to solve this situation. When standing still looks like a waste of time, know that it's a save of time. Let me say that again. When standing still looks like a waste of time, know that it's a save of time. There's no time you wait for God or stay before God praying or studying the word of God to speak to you that is wasted. No, it's an investment. Moving on. 
Moses cast the tree. Now, Moses, has he had cried. And God had shown Moses a tree, a specific tree. And now Moses cast the tree. Moses played his part in ending the Mara situation by casting the branch of the tree into the water. He didn't think the divine directive was observed. This is obedience. You see, 99.9% .9 of times, the way God will be telling you to do things is going to be senseless to your natural mind, to your natural mind. It's not going to make sense. God is supremely wise, okay? We think we're smart. Oh, yeah, right. See, so when God tells you to do something, just do it. He knows what he's doing. Believe me. Heaven is God's dwelling place, but he has given us the earth to dominate for him. I want you to listen to this. Come on close, okay? The extent to which you are going to dominate your environment, are you listening, is directly linked to your level of obedience to God. That's, that's a principle. It's a divine principle in the kingdom. I love Pastor Rogers. Here's one of his numerous quotes. God will not give his authority to a rebel. It's not going to happen. You want to dominate your environment? You got to be under God's authority in obedience. You cannot be over until you are under. You see, when you are under, First Peter, it says, uh, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You see? And it will lift you up in due time. See? So it's a divine principle. You want to be over your situation, then go under God. Amen. Job 36 verse 11. The book of Job, of course, who else can tell us how it is to be under God's authority? Uh, 36 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Now, this is not talking about uh, you're never going to have any problem anymore or you will have all the money in the World Bank. God never promised us that. No, please. But prosperity is when you are thriving where God has planted you, doing what God uh, has called you to do. That is the highest point of prosperity and pleasure, okay? So to do what the Lord says is to demonstrate your faith and to obey is to be great. To do what the Lord says is to demonstrate your faith and to obey is to be great. So let's have a recap. How was the marriage situation resolved? Moses cried out to God. God showed Moses a tree Moses cast the tree into the water. Now, what you, what you are saying, okay, so what happened? What happened after all this? The water was healed. You see, we serve the almighty God who can do all things. The water was healed. He can do all things except lie. He cannot lie. Amen. God healed Mara for Moses and the children of Israel. So they had water to drink in the desert. I've been walked for three days. How long have you been walking in life? In the desert of life. You are thirsty. You are tired. And the only water that you could see was beer. How long? God is faithful. He did it for Moses. He's still doing it for many of his children. And he wants to do it for you too. Know that God will never break his promise to resolve every problem that we may face in life. He will not. He will not lie. But he's going to resolve it. Are you listening? His way. Not our way. His way. God gets glory from healing our Mara. Not by not healing it. 
He's not going to get any glory by leaving us in our problems. No. He gets the glory when he heals the Mara and we come out of that trouble with testimonies, you see. So if your Mara situation is not getting resolved, go check where you are not on the same page with the Lord. And when I got to this point, I could not, but I couldn't help but remember a personal testimony of, of mine that we, we had prayed to God concerning a, a situation that was really, really bitter. And uh, God spoke, you know, almost immediately that I, I, I'm, I'm fixing the mess. Don't worry. I got this. And we were like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we were so happy. Guess what? Three years on, the situation still remained. And I became discouraged at a point. And I was like, what's going on? We prayed and the Lord spoke expressly that I got this situation fixed. I, 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 I'm cleaning the mess. Don't worry. But this is three years on. What's going on? But we thank God for the sweet, blessed Holy Spirit who is patient with us. I don't know how he copes, but it's God. So as, along the line, the Lord helped me to realize that even though God had said, I got this three years ago, in, in that in situation needs to be gradual because we didn't get ourselves into that mess in one day. So he had to do it gradually. That thing had to evolve. And through that evolving, God began to build me and the people involved I mean, God began to change our perspectives and all that. And today, we are the better for it, you see. So, God is committed to healing our Mara. And he is faithful in every situation. So, if God has promised you, like, don't worry, I, I, I have this problem. I, I have it fixed. Don't worry. That doesn't mean it's going to be on your time. Okay? But God is telling you, I got this. Okay? I'm responsible now. But in the meantime, just keep doing what he has told you to do until you see physical manifestation. Hebrews 10, 23. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold resolutely to the hope we confess. You see? You're confessing that, oh, God has promised me, you need to hold on to that hope. For he who promised is faithful. Listen, God is faithful. I'm telling you. From, from, my, from what he has done in my personal life, I'm, I'm telling you, he is faithful. Honestly. So hold on to God. Don't, 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 don't get discouraged. Keep holding on. To hold on is to hope on. To hold on is to hope on. How was the marriage situation resolved? Moses cried to God. God showed Moses a tree. Moses cast the tree into the water and the water was healed. Have you cried to God concerning your Mara? Huh? Have you? Or you have given up every hope that God can do anything. You are thinking, well, that's good for you, Zion. He did it for you. I don't think he can do it for me because I've been, I've been, I've been hoping and praying. You have no idea how long. Listen up now. That is your own time. You live in time. God doesn't live in time. Okay? He's going to do it his time. On his turn. It's your job to keep hoping. It's his job to move at his own time. Okay? Don't let the devil lie to you. And then stop praying. And then stop hoping. No! Don't let the devil lie to you. To close your mouth is to go down south. Do not. Everyone that Jesus healed 
except the, the man at the, at the pool of Bethesda, they all cried out to Jesus. And even the man at the pool of Bethesda, when Jesus asked him, he still spoke. He spoke. So every one of them cried out, Jesus, help me. If you cry out, he will help you. So don't let the devil trick you and say, there's no point praying. No, keep praying. And if you have cried to Jesus, have you obeyed the instructions he gave you? That's another problem that many children of God that they have. They will pray, God will speak, you see, and then they will refuse to do what God has, has, has commanded them to do because it doesn't make sense to them or it's kind of inconvenient. It's going to be inconvenient for them to do. Well, what do you want God to do? Huh? That's not his fault. If you disobey Christ, you deny his lordship. That's what you are doing. You pray to God and you say, God, I have a job from ABC company and I have a job offer from XYZ company. This is going to pay me 100000 a year with some extra benefit. But this one is going to pay me $50,000 a year with no extra benefit. Lord, what should I do? And the Holy Spirit says, go for the one with 50000 What? Excuse me? Oh, no. That must be the devil. Uh-uh. Let me pray again. And you pray again, and the Lord confirms it through his word or through somebody that had no idea what you are going through, and they speak into your life, a child of God, not just anybody or a prophet, no. And you didn't even tell them what's going on, and boom. And you know that this is God confirming himself to you. And you are going, hmm... I just bought a BM. I just bought a BMW. Um, so 50000 is not going to do. So what do you want God to do? If you go for that job and you run into trouble, and you will because that's not where God wants you to go, and then you are saying, Father, help me. Jesus, I'm, I need your help. What do you want him to do? Huh? Have you obeyed the last instruction he gave you? If you haven't, go back. Obey him. Unless you don't want your Mara resolved. But if you want it to resolve, go back to the table of obedience. God will honor anyone who honors him and will dishonor anyone who dishonors him. It's a simple man in the kingdom of God. Now, if you are on the throne of your life, okay, Christ is on the cross in your life. Are you getting this? If you are on the throne, you, you, you make decisions without asking God. Christ is still on the, th on the cross in your life. And that's not supposed to be. Okay? So the, know that the solution to your Mara is directly linked to your obedience. So get yourself off that throne. Dethrone yourself and then throne Jesus. You are not fit. You are not good enough. To be on the throne of your own life. No. You, you have made enough mess already. So do everybody a favor. And do yourself a favor. Get off that throne. And put Jesus on the throne. Amen. Now if you don't have the assurance. Of being saved. That is. If the Holy Spirit. Is not in your heart. And actively directing. Everything you do. If the Holy Spirit is not directing everything you do every day, listen up. I'm not going to mess around with you. You need to get saved. Go, you need to get saved. If the Holy Spirit is not in you, the Bible says, I did not. The Bible says, you are not one of Jesus' children. So you need to get saved. And that can happen right here, right now. Because that would be the starting point of resolving the problems in your life, okay? You want to have a rethink of how you have been viewing Jesus and salvation. Christianity, being saved, is not for the weak-minded. No. Jesus is an intelligent choice. 
Because this is all for your benefit. If you give the control of your life to Jesus, you will have benefit here on earth. Like what we are talking about, resolving the matter in your life. And then you have the assurance of eternity. You will know without any shadow of doubt that you are going to heaven when you die or when there's rapture. Now, if you are ready to have insurance and assurance of life, that's what I call my Jesus, is my insurance, is my assurance, okay? Click at the link that will come up at the end of this program. It will take you to Want to Know Jesus page of our website, and it's very simple, step by step. And if you confess that Jesus is Lord, and you mean what you say in your mouth, that is, you believe in your heart, you are committing yourself to what you are saying, the Bible says you will be saved, okay? Today is the day of salvation. Don't postpone it. You don't want to stay one more day in your problem, do you? No, it doesn't make sense, does it? No. So why not go for Jesus? Because he's the only one who has the solution. Amen. Now, before I let you go, let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Thank you for how you have opened our eyes. Lord, I pray that as you have spoken through me to different kinds of people, Lord, meet them at their level. So, Lord, I pray. And bring them by the way, O Lord. Grant them the heart to release themselves unto you. Every obstinate heart, every satanic veil that blinds people from understanding the help you are trying to give to them. Father, let your finger take away such evil veil from their eyes. Turn their situations around, O Lord, and bring the glory to yourself and give them the, the benefits, O Lord, to the honor and the glory of your holy name. And bring the increase to your kingdom. For in Jesus' name, I will be prayed. Amen. Amen. I will see you next week. If Jesus has not split the sky open.